today on Rappler. A Philippine mayor in the Spratly Island says his town is no match for China's new city in the disputed South China Sea. ASEAN has a lot of faults as an organization. You know, many people deride it as a talk shop. Yeah. But the, the reality is, it is the diplomatic vehicle for a critically important economic and geostrategic region. And, and Cambodia has proven that it is not only unfit uh, to be a member of ASEAN, but, but certainly unfit to lead it. Southeast Asian analyst Zachary Abusa says Cambodia is not fit to lead ASEAN. And the Ombudsman files graft charges against Gwen Garcia, a senatorial candidate of Opposition Alliance, UNA. Hello, I'm Maria Ressa. Welcome to Rappler, your social news network. The mayor of Kalayaan, a Palawan municipality in the Spratly Islands, says his town is no match for China's new city that supposedly governs disputed areas in the South China Sea. In fact, Kalayaan is on land also claimed by China's Sancha City. Mayor Eduardo Bitoonan says Kalayaan is a fifth-class municipality, while Sancha Island has the budget of a prefectural-level city. Kalayaan thrives of an an, on an annual internal revenue allotment of 37 million pesos. It also receives an 8 million peso annual development fund for basic services. The budget is big for the town's population of 114, but it's also of strategic importance to the Philippines given China's show of force in the South China Sea. By comparison, Sancha City built hotels, restaurants, and even 3G spots. In February, one month alone, the Chinese city spent 2.2 million yuan or 14.3 million pesos to build diesel oil power regulators. That's a little less than 50% of the annual budget of Kalayaan spent in a month. Indonesia's top diplomat says Southeast Asian nations are on the cusp of agreeing on a statement of unity on the South China Sea dispute. Indonesian Foreign Minister Marty Nataligawa took on the role of mediator after the Association of Southeast Asian Nations failed to issue a joint statement in Phnom Penh last week. Nataligawa says ASEAN remains united. He says he's working to identify basic ASEAN positions on the South China Sea, which would dispel the perception that that the 10-member group is divided. Cambodian Foreign Minister Hor Nam Hong says the bloc's joint position may be announced Friday, pending approval from all ASEAN foreign ministers. Divisions over members' territorial disputes with Beijing prevented ASEAN from issuing its joint statement for the first time in 45 years. Southeast Asian expert Professor Zachary Abusa says Cambodia's move to block a consensus on Chinese assertiveness in the South China Sea proves Cambodia is not fit to be a member of ASEAN, much less lead it. Abuza notes the impasse in Phnom Penh broke a 45-year-long tradition of patient diplomacy. ASEAN has a lot of faults as an organization. You know, many people deride it as a talk shop. Yeah. But the, the reality is, it is the diplomatic vehicle for a critically important economic and geostrategic region. and and. Cambodia has proven that it is not only unfit uh, to be a member of ASEAN, but, but certainly unfit to lead it. Um, and Abusa adds, ultimately, the answer to the Philippine security problems will lie with a unified ASEAN by forging closer diplomatic ties and vigorous back-channeling with Vietnam and Malaysia. He recalls how a united ASEAN repulsed Chinese incursions into Philippine contested areas in 1993. Abuza says the Chinese are terrified of multilateral action and insist on bilateral engagement. You know, we have uh, Chinese frigates uh, uh, running aground 60 miles off of Palawan. Yes. The, 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 the Philippines has very good reason uh, to uh, uh, be concerned. Um, this is, in some ways, the Chinese aggression is very good for the Philippines. 
they've done more to to to, to galvanize Philippine nationalism uh, than than anything in the past uh, few years. But more importantly, I think the Philippines has now realized that their ultimate security is going to be based on ASEAN. Yes, and um, you see much closer diplomatic ties. Uh, right now in communications and back-channeling with Vietnam, with Malaysia, with other countries. Um, the, this, this, the future of Philippine security is going to be in a very unified ASEAN. The Ombudsman files graft charges against Cebu Governor Gwen Garcia for the allegedly anomalous purchase of land by the provincial government. Garcia is also a senatorial candidate of opposition group United Nationalist Alliance, or UNA. Under Garcia, Cebu purchased a 24.92 hectare land in Naga, Cebu in 2008. The Ombudsman discovered that a third of the area is underwater. Garcia says the ombudsman's move brings up suspicion of possible political harassment. Cebu is the country's biggest voting province with nearly 2.5 million registered voters. Senator Francis Chis Escudero will join Vice President Judge Omar Binay's UNA, but will campaign alone. Senate President Juan Ponce Enrile says he thinks Escudero will be part of UNA. I think uh, Chis is uh, uh, going to join uh the ticket, but uh, you know, Chis uh, uh, has his own way of campaigning. Uh, he can uh, he can campaign alone. Oh, he does not have to ascend the stage of uh, uh, any rally if he does not want. Una says it stands by its policy for candidates to campaign exclusively with the group. Binay's party is considering 78 personalities for the remaining slots. The candidates they named so far are Joey de Venecia, Cagayan Representative Jack Enrile Jr., San Juan Representative J.V. Ejercito, Senator Gregorio Onasan, resigned Senator Mig Zubiri, Zambales Representative Mitos Magsaysay, and Cebu Governor Gwen Garcia. Enrile also says on the proposed super coalition between UNA and LP and calls it unrealistic. A Nielsen shopper trend report shows Filipinos visiting grocery stores more often last year but buying fewer items. 45% of Filipinos went to supermarkets weekly in 2011, up from 30% in 2010. The average frequency of trips to stores increased to 2.6 visits per month last year from 2.2 visits in 2010. Nielsen Philippines says consumers shop only when they need to. Shoppers bought fewer items thrice a month in 2011, up from once a month in 2010. Jameson says the impact of the global economic crisis makes consumers shop more frequently but buy fewer items. Well, let's now look at Rappler's Wrap for today, a list of the 10 most important events around the world you shouldn't miss. At number one, U.S. Defense Secretary Leon Panetta says Syria is rapidly spinning out of control. Jordan's King Abdullah II warns his northern neighbor was on the brink of civil war and that its large stash of chemical weapons could fall into Al-Qaeda's hands. The battle for the capital reaches its fifth straight day after a bomb killed President Bashar al-Assad's key security aides Wednesday. At number three, tensions rise in the Middle East after Israel accused Iran of orchestrating the bombing of a bus with Israeli tourists in a resort town Wednesday, killing at least seven people and injuring 30 others. All signs point to Iran, says Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu, adding Israel will react strongly to Iran's terror. The U.S. and Israel blame Iran and the Iranian-backed militia Hezbollah for a series of attacks since the beginning of the year. At number five, education is key to building the next generation, particularly in today's fast-changing landscape. The Aquino administration prioritizes education in its proposed budget for next year. If approved by Congress, the 2013 budget increases the budget of state universities and colleges by almost 50 percent, from 25.85 billion pesos in 2012 to 37.12 billion pesos in 2013. At number six, Online courses from expensive Ivy League universities in the United States are now open to everyone for free. 
This week, a dozen highly ranked universities, including Princeton, Stanford, and University of Pennsylvania, signed on with Coursera, a new venture offering free classes online. Ivy League's going online started last fall. Sales of ebooks more than doubled in 2011 to bring in some $2.07 billion for the U.S. publishing industry, more than double 2010's $869 million. Last year, ebooks only accounted for 6% of overall publishing revenues. There's, enough, there's more room for growth, though, because traditional hardcover or paperbacks still represent the bulk of publishers' net revenue. The crescent moon on Thursday, July 19th, will signal the start of the holy month of Ramadan, the time of fasting, cleansing, and renewal. Moon sighting committees in Zamboanga, Sulu, Tawi-Tawi, and Cotabato will watch the night skies closely tonight, and for the first time ever, the Philippines will synchronize the start of Ramadan throughout the country. In the past, Western Mindanao started Ramadan ahead of other Muslim areas. For the full top 10, visit Rappler.com's The Wrap. The World Health Organization and the Department of Health are investigating a cholera outbreak in Catanduanes, Bicol. Health Assistant Secretary Eric Tayag says this started January 2012. A total of 2,046 cholera cases were monitored in Catanduanes' 11 towns. Most cases are in Virac, San Andres, and Pandan. Contaminated water is usually the cause of a cholera outbreak in the Philippines. While athletes compete in the London Olympics, thousands of technicians will run the most connected games in history while dealing with the threat of cyber attacks. Technology company ATOS leads a group of six firms dealing with the Olympics. The IT company says, quote, the London Games will be the most connected games in history. Eight billion devices, including smartphones and tablets, are expected to be online during the games, which means a huge amount of data will be processed. New Yahoo Chief Executive Marisa Meyer announces she's pregnant on Twitter, ramping up an ongoing debate about working moms. On July 17th, Meyer tweets to say she's expecting a baby boy, but says she'll work through her maternity leave, seeming to reassure Yahoo shareholders that motherhood won't get in the way of her new role. Actress Mia Farrow tweets, quote, let's hope she inspires corporations to create better options for all working moms. Princeton University professor Anne-Marie Slaughter congratulates Meyer and says she will inspire countless women in technology, but says making it to the CEO position isn't realistic for most women and men. Slaughter, who quit a State Department job to spend more time with her family, stirred up a furor with an essay asking if it was possible for working mothers to have it all. Only 19 companies on the Fortune 500 roster of top U.S. corporations are run by women. Well, let's look at our mood navigator today. Every story on Rappler has a mood meter which gives you eight moods to choose from. Click on one of the moods. When you click it, that vote goes to the mood navigator. Uh, take a look at the mood navigator today. It's been slowly turning green all week, but some interesting stories come up today. State colleges to get huge 2013 budget comes in with 86% happy. Also interesting, coming in last night, hopes dim for RH bill approval. 65, 66% angry, but 23% happy. All that also going to today's mood. Most people are happy. Well, that's Rappler's newscast for today, Thursday, July 19, 2012. Visit Rappler.com and watch our newscast Monday to Friday. Tell us how you feel on our mood meter. I'm Maria Ressa. As we say at Rappler, Tomorrow begins today.